How are your veggies doing this year? I had such a good harvest last summer that I decided to expand my garden this year. I even saved seeds from last year and started them indoors under grow lights. I did research in the spring about companion planting and happily planted my lettuce with my tomatoes, my peas with my pumpkins, my beans with my eggplant, and my onions with my raspberries. But my peas were completely overshadowed by the pumpkins, and there are volunteer tomato plants popping up everywhere in the garden. <laughs> my lovely big red tomatoes that I was so proud of last year seem to have a black circle on the bottom, and I found out that that is called blossom end rot. And the marigolds I planted to attract pollinators never did flower. They're quite big, but no flowers. They say that new gardeners learn by trowel and error, and I guess I still have a lot to learn. Those onions that I planted beside the raspberries are nowhere to be found, <laughs> and the raspberries are a big, tangled mess. They really need a good pruning. Experienced gardeners, especially vineyard owners, know the benefits of pruning. Grapes grow on one-year-old wood, so the new wood that grows one season bears fruit the following year. If you don't prune grapevines, they become a dense mass of old wood which only grows leaves and shoots. Also, the dense wood leads to poor air circulation, which encourages fungal diseases. Grapevines have been cultivated in the Middle East for thousands of years, and they have significance in Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. The grapevine was very important culturally, and economically in biblical times. Because of its centrality in everyday life, it is often used symbolically in scripture. Grape vines are mentioned in the Bible more than any other plant, and there are eight references to grapes in the Quran as well. Whether you worship God, Yahweh, or Allah, we are all connected to one vine the manifestation of divine love. We are also intertwined with one another. When you look at a grapevine, you can't tell where one vine ends and another begins. If we feel secure, deeply attached, we are held up by the vine and our sacred connections when the rough weather comes. In the passage from John that Shelley read, the Gospel writer speaks of God pruning away any branch in us that bears no fruit. Perhaps he is referring to some of our bad habits, such as greed, selfishness, jealousy, and pride. If a branch breaks off from the vine, it will wither and die. But if it stays connected to the vine, it will grow and thrive and form other branches. Leaves will emerge to catch the sun's rays and the raindrops. Flowers will bloom and become fruit. What fruit will be born in us? In his epistle to the Galatians, the Apostle Paul talks about the fruits of the Spirit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Are these not the qualities God wants to nurture in us? As we grow as individuals, with our families, and in our communities of faith, God helps us to prune away the bad wood and nurture the healthy branches, allowing the sun to shine through. 
As we grow in God's love, we grow in our relationships with others. Like the tomatoes in my garden, we all have a few blemishes, but with nurturing, support, and connection to the one true vine, we can grow and flourish. Last year, as some of you may know, I hosted a faith study on Zoom with a group of Emmanuel friends, and we discussed this passage from John's Gospel. We had a deep and engaging discussion, and then one wise person spoke up and said, maybe it's just about the wine. <laughs> she was kidding, of course, but maybe there's something in that. We grow older and wiser, we share God's love and holy wisdom with others, and the fruit of our wisdom is like a fine wine, well-balanced with all the elements combined in harmony. Jesus says, if we follow his command, we will bear fruit. And his command is simple, love one another. He goes on to say, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. The root of the Greek word for joy, chera, is the same as the word for grace. We experience joy because of God's grace. Jesus came so that we might experience an abundant life. Just as the power of this love for our lives comes when we draw power from the vine, so our joy comes from knowing that we have been chosen, called, and sent. Jesus has chosen his disciples and us to share the gift of friendship and love. Jesus is indeed a true and constant friend who continues to give us the greatest gifts of all, love, joy, and grace. Now it is up to us to share that friendship in our homes, in our church families, and out in the broader community, both locally and globally. Malcolm Geet is a British poet, singer, songwriter, and Anglican priest. And this is a sonnet he wrote called, I am the vine. How, <clears throat> how might it feel to be part of the vine? Not just to see the vineyard from afar, or even pluck the clusters, press the wine, but to be grafted in to feel the stir of inward sap that rises from our root. Himself deep planted in the ground of love. To feel a leaf unfold a tender shoot. As tendrils curled unfurl, as branches give a little to the swelling of the grape, in gradual perfection, round and full, to bear within oneself the joy and hope of God's good vintage till it's ripe and whole. What might it mean to bide and to abide in such rich love as makes the poor heart glad? Jesus is the one true vine and we are the branches. Let us bear fruit in Jesus' name, may it be so.